what we're looking at is these horses are the closest to the true old-fashioned horses the true time when horses were shod because of necessity horseshoeing didn't start 2,000 years ago because somebody wanted a fashion industry we didn't waste 2,000 years of energy shoeing horses because it was a nice thing to do it, it was an exciting industry the original farriers were people that had to shoe they were probably dealt they were probably slaves and they got the the, the bottom job which was making sure the horses could work we're looking at the old-fashioned horses and the ancient horses in ancient times why were they shod well they were shod because of necessity they shod because they needed foot protection so that they could go to war or they could plow the fields they added features to the shoes to give them enough traction okay and so when we get on to working horses western working horses or pack horses we see the working horses all over the world and these people are still shoeing horses out of necessity it's nothing to do with fashion fashion industry you know we could say most of our sports today are vanity you know we're competing against each other well for me i like to compete too i'm a farrier that likes to compete and so people who have horses like to compete the, but the basic people are the people working on their ranch going in the mountains and having shoes on for the main reasons that's protection and traction and shoes do both of these things very well it's a very traditional process it works in um, poor conditions you know if somebody's got a shoe in the field it's possible to shape a shoe with the minimum amount of tools it's possible to nail it on with the minimum amount of tools so that is the traditional type of hoof care our industry developed from where from there we've gone on to our scientific horseshoeing and now we involve all types of things scientific we use treadmills we use high-speed cameras we use enforced plates to get, gather more information to give the extras that the horses need. It's just like um, all around our horse we're seeing the complementary um, specialties like chiropractic, like massage, like saddle fitting. They're all very important to make the horse perform and be comfortable. Okay? There's not a horse out there that won't benefit when it's competing hard from complementary services um, we look at we look at the modern sport teams and they're normally young young athletes and they're at the peak of their peak of their performance and you know after they've had a couple of hard games you know on the weekend on monday they can expect some soreness if they're not if they're not sore and they don't need some services that or some massage or chiropractic then they're pretty lucky because guys that normally give a hundred percent hurt and so we get the same with our horses. We expect to use complementary therapies. And as a farrier, we are part of those com complementary therapies. We have a lot of devices or additional devices that we can use when we're shoeing. Yes, we've got shoes and nails, which are very important, but then we can have shoes and nails with, or we can have shoes with extra features. We have hundreds of types of pads to use for heel support or sole protection or to change the angles and each one needs its own evaluation why we're going to use it we have many types of shoes that we can purchase one example would be bar shoes but we can take normal keg shoes and we can actually create orthopedics on them we can create supports okay we can widen heels we can widen branches or we can narrow branches because what we're talking about when we're shoeing it, uh, shoeing athletes is they're working on a surface and we're looking at what happens to the leg with the ground re reaction force against it okay so sometimes it's necessary to, to shoe a horse with a wide shoe on one side and a narrow shoe on the other side and we can do that by modifying machine mates. It's definitely not necessary to have to learn to build shoes, to shoe the majority of horses. Learning to build shoes, what it does for us, it, it gives us skill test. It gives us the opportunity to develop hand and eye skills. Okay. Yes, in the modern farrier business, most people don't need the handmade shoes in a daily business. What they can't get away from is the need for skill. As a farrier, one of the only things I have to sell is skill. Because we can buy all the same products, so then it becomes how do we use those products? How do we use those products well?